Hello, good morning. Uh, welcome to the final conference of the DITRAMA project uh, with the title Digital Transition of the Furniture Sector, uh, New Opportunities for the Labor Market. Um, DITRAMA is a three year, uh, three years sector skill alliance project that is funded by the Erasmus Plus uh, program of the European Commission. Uh, that is going to end by the end of this month. So we are really at the, at the close end of the project. Uh, my name is Massimiliano Rumignani, and I'm here as a member of the DITRAMA partnership. Uh, as many of you already know, the DITRAMA project focuses its attention on a new occupational profile, uh, the Digital Transformation Manager, uh, that in, is in charge of leading and deploying the digital transformation strategy within, uh, specifically within the furniture companies. But in spite of this, uh, we consider that uh, all the outputs of the DITRAMA project can be easily uh, used by and transferred um, to other sectors, uh, especially the traditional ones, uh, for their similarities with the uh, furniture sector. Uh, all these results and outcomes, and there are quite a lot, uh, are available on the project website, that is ditrama.eu. Uh, the, the, the website is in different languages, uh, the, the partners' languages, so you will find different of these outcomes. Uh, in uh, directly on this uh, website. Um, we are very uh, happy to see also uh, there is a high number of participants. A few of you have already been involved in uh, previous phases of the project, but we can see also there are uh, several uh, new people. Uh, now I'm going to shortly present the event agenda and give, you, uh, give the floor to our uh, speakers. So just a moment, I'm going to share the screen. Is it already shared, I think? Okay, so um, this is the title. Uh, as said before, I'm uh, Massimiliano Rumignani and uh, I'm from uh, AMIC. And uh, uh, the first uh, intervention, unfortunately, uh, cannot will be uh, Joaquin Solana. He, he, he excuses himself, but he has a personal uh, problem, so he cannot uh, join us uh, for this. Uh, Joaquin Solana is the cluster manager of Chenfim. Chenfim is the uh, project coordinator of the drama project. Uh, so we will start with the presentation of some key uh, project uh, results. Uh, we will start with uh, Yurum Doom, the director of Woodvise, uh, a center specialized in the furniture sector in terms of uh, training and uh, research from Belgium. Uh, that will present the curriculum of the digital transformation manager for the furniture sector. After that, uh, we will have uh, the presentation of the DITRAMA platform and online uh, training course by Almudena uh, Gonzalez uh, the, from the International Department of the Metodo Consultores, that is uh, a Spanish VET uh, provider. Uh, then uh, myself uh, will uh, I will present uh, the DITRAMA uh, guide for the digital transformation manager for the furniture sector. This is, let's say, is the um, offline version of the of the course. Uh, after that, uh, we will have the uh, keynote uh, speaker. Um, about the digital transformation uh, with trends and uh, scenarios. Um, it will be presented by uh, Jeroen Fransen, a senior expert in the labor market and organization from Agoria, from, uh, from Belgium. Uh, after that, uh, we will have a round uh, table uh, that will be moderated by Serena Leca, uh, that is a researcher at the Arles University and partner in this project. Um, the title of the roundtable will be the impact of the digital transformation on the labor market for the food and furniture industry. Uh, there will be other three participants to the roundtable. That will be Xavier P, uh, that uh, is the chair of the work group for diagnostic of uh, 4.0 of the Industry 4.0 Commission of the Association of the Catalan Association of Engineers. Uh, then we will have uh, Margherita Royatti. Uh, that is the coordinator of international relations and research fellow at uh, ADAPT, an Italian entity doing international studies and research in the labor field. Uh, then we will have uh, uh, Nicolas Van Beek, that is product trainer of the company Van Oeke, uh, from uh, Belgium as well, that uh, have been uh, uh, prized with, uh, uh, I mean, as a relevant company in the field 
of uh, Industry 4.0 for the transformation it, indeed uh, in the company. Um, after that, we will have just a, a short uh, five minute uh, break. Uh, and then we will have uh, uh, Gregorio Cagnavate, the International Research and Development Project Manager at uh, CETEM, a technological center uh, of the furniture sector from IECLA, from uh, Spain, uh, that will present us the All View uh, project um, that uh, is trying to uh, build uh, together a platform, is a COVID project, so it's going to present the aims of uh, uh, this uh, Center of Vocational uh, Excellence for the European food and furniture industry. Okay, and after that, we will have a, another small round table, uh, as, let's say a face to face uh, meeting that allow a meeting with between uh, uh, the VET uh, and the higher education center that are facing the digital challenge. Um, that will be moderated by Chiara Terranio, that is the project manager from Federlenio Arredo, uh, that is the largest Italian association of furniture and uh, wood uh, companies in Italy. Um, she will, uh, it will be joined also by Clara Ferraz, the head of the training activity as uh, CFPIMM, uh, a training center for wood and uh, furniture industry in uh, Lordello from Portugal. Then we will have Alexandra de Raefe, uh, head of research and center uh, of uh, FITI lab of the Hogent University. Uh, that is a University of Applied Science and Arts in the Flanders from Belgium. Uh, then we will have uh, uh, Matthias Grimompon, that is lecturer at uh, Augrent University, the same uh, entity of Alexandra, the, 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 that is partner as well in this uh, project. Uh, and then at the end, we will have uh, the final conclusion and the closing statement uh, by Julio Rodrigo, uh, that is the Innovation and Suitability Manager uh, within uh, SEMFIM. Uh, that has been also the coordinator of uh, this project. I am Jürgen Dohm, Managing Director of Woodwise in Belgium. Imagine that you have a person in your company who is able to plan, design, guide and check the implementation of the changes needed by the furniture companies to transform themselves and adapt to the digital transformation. With the DITRAMA project, we want to support and guide companies towards their digital transformation. The focus of the DITRAMA project is to build and transfer effective skills through an innovative MOOC to train a new kind of managers to successfully lead the digital transformation in the companies of the furniture industry. The first step was to establish a new joint occupational profile. Based upon this new joint job profile, we developed a corresponding curriculum. The main principles that are integrated in this curriculum are the why. This is the core of the job defined job profile and forms the aim of the course. With the what, we define the goals and objectives of the course. These are also known as the learning outcomes. In the how section, we suggest some teaching activities, learning materials, assessment methods, and so on. In the where section, we've mapped the related skills, knowledge and competences and checked the alignment of the learning outcomes within each learning unit. And finally, we've organized and revised the training activities through a pilot training. The curriculum of the Digital Transformation Manager is still a prototype, though it has been validated by different stakeholders. More than 90, 90 educational and vet specialists from 30 European countries completed the online question questionnaire to validate the proposed curriculum. For the development of the curriculum, we have based us upon the defined job profile. There we can see that a digital transformation manager needs seven categories of skills sets, 
which together cover the complete job profile. Then we further developed these seven categories. And this has led us to the definition of 10 learning units, in which all learning outcomes have been described. The learning outcomes principle is systematically promoted in the EU policy agenda for education, training and employment. Learning outcomes are statements of what an individual should know, should understand and should be able to do at the end of a learning process. The learning outcomes approach binds together important European tools, such as the European Qualification Framework, ECVET and so on. This is the section where we've defined four learning units for the 11 technical skills and six learning units for the non-technical skills. Thanks to this structure, as a set of 10 independent learning modules, we could set up this curriculum at the QF level 5, in which we address youngsters in higher education as well as managers with interest in the furniture industry. The full program takes around 70 hours of study to complete and is good for 2.8 ECVIT points. To address also the youngsters in vocational education and training and co-workers in the furniture industry, we developed a version situated at EQF level 4. This reduced program takes around 30 and a half hours of study and is 1.42 ECVET points. Now I want to go a bit deeper into the 10 learning units. These are set up as independent competence units, which can be considered as learning outcome clusters. The first four are technical. And the first one is around digital technology, exploration of contemporary emerging and potential disruptive technologies. It contains seven video bills on the Internet of Things, the Industrial Internet of Things and on Cloud Computing. In the second learning unit on Digital Technology, Engineering and Manufacturing, you can learn through 18 video bills on the Horizontal and Vertical System Integration, Additive Manufacturing and Autonomous Robots. The third learning unit is about simulation and augmented and virtual reality, and especially in design and in relation to artificial intelligence. This learning unit is composed of nine video pills. And the last technical learning unit is on big data and data security. This is treated in 12 video pills. In learning unit five, we have the first of the six non-technical learning units. The first one is on innovation and digital transformation. In this section we have 11 video pills. The sixth unit, composed of 13 pills, focuses on leadership within a digital transformation. And the seventh learning unit has 10 pills and is about communication and digital transformation. It's about engagement transparency, about digital partnerships and digital marketing. Within a digital transformation project, we cannot leave our people behind. So this learning unit is on how to involve the workforce in digital transformation. Six pills are dedicated to this chapter. Quality, risk and safety in digital transformation is the ninth learning unit composed of eight video pills. And last but not least, we have a specific learning unit on the social and environmental impact of digitization. This learning unit of six video pills is treating the ethics within a digital transformation. This way, the complete training course is delivered through an innovative MOOC with 100 video pills. Suggestions for further reading, infographics, PowerPoint presentations, and so on. The course is totally free of charge. Thanks to the concept of this curriculum, the time and order is not important. You can take it as just-in-time learning. We are convinced that this curriculum will be an important added value for the European furniture sector. 
But of course, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So we do invite you to take this course, to test it and to give us feedback. Because as the digital transformation itself, also this curriculum and the developed courses and video bills reflect the current and maybe a future situation. But we don't know if the future will be exactly as we thought. The coronic, corona pandemic showed us that. So we need to be ready to adapt to new situations in the field. Okay, thank, thank you for this uh, intervention. Uh, now I'm happy to give the floor to Almudena Gonzalez from the International Department of the Method of Consultores that is going to present the, uh, the trauma platform with the uh, online uh, training uh, course. So please, Almudena, the floor is yours. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. I'm Almudena Gonzalez from Methodo, and today we are presenting the learning platform of the project that hosts the online course. And before you see the video, I would like to point out the great job of the partners who have developed uh, the training materials of this course, as they have done an exceptional job. And I really hope everyone finds it interesting. And for those who have not yet uh, done it, I'm encouraging everyone to register and take part of the course as it will be available for the next uh, five years. So enjoy the video. Hello, good morning. We are here to present the trauma training course and to present how it is is to move around the platform. In order to get the, the trauma training course, you have to write the trauma.eu like this. You can choose the language, in our case, we're going to choose English. And then we can see here the contents. In order to get the trauma training course, we have to go here, training course. And then we can enroll in the online and free of charge training course for digital transformation managers for the furniture sector. In order to register ourselves, we have to click here you can register at this link. Then you will get one register form like this. We have to fill in the form with our data. In our case, name, surname, mail address, city, country, gender, and occupation. It is really important the email because you will receive one password in order to go to the trauma training course. The occupation is important as well, because we have two training paths in the trauma course. One of them is aimed at a higher educational students, university, and managers from the good furniture sector. Another one for petty students, vocational, professional education, and workers from good furniture sector. I'm going to choose university, in this case, English as language, and then to send the register form. Immediately, we have one email in our inbox. If this is not the case, please search your spam with all the indications to get the trauma training course and the password. Then we can go to the course. Into our course, we have three blocks like this so we can go for instance into the resource and here we have the platform operation and guide here there is information around how to move around the platform with the content a structure of the course how to register access to the platform access to the course as we could see we have as well the guide for the digital transformation manager for the furniture sector. This is one presentation for the course. It will go to the communications block. You had one presentation forum and one discussion forum. Into the presentation forum, we can introduce ourselves, our interests, and so on. Into the discussion forum, we can keep in touch with the colleagues, with other students that they are into the Tra training course from the trauma. 
to the contents, we have the training course. We have 10 units from one to 10, and this is a structure, several topics, and one test in order to know if we are getting the concepts. For instance, we can go into the first topics, Internet of Things, Emergency of Connected Economics. Here, we can move using this part, but we can go here to enter into the course. We start the course, and then we have the summary, the learning outcomes, the topics of the video, videos, takeaways related to the furniture industry, and additional material. Has PDFs like this with additional uh, developing the economic impact of Internet of Things, papers, students, additional material, bibliography, and so on. Then, after to see all the topics into the unit, we can go to the test. Here, you can see the test, and we can go enter. We press a start, and we get the test. As you can see, we have four responses. Only one of them is the right one. We are going to fill in the test in order to show you how is provided the feedback. As you can see, we can submit the response and immediately you have one feedback. In this case, this is one incorrect response. After the test, you have your score. In our case, it's 57, so we're passing the test. After our test, if we are passing the test as is our case, we get the certificates. Here we can see the certificate. So this is one example, but it's supposed to have our name. And we get the certificates regarding our course. So I hope that it has been easy for you to move around the trauma training course and I wish you a successful in your training course. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, uh, Almudena, for the presentation and the video. And uh, now I'm going to present uh, uh, the, the guide for the digital transformation manager of the furniture uh, sector. Um, this is indeed uh, the um, offline version of what uh, uh, Almudena has just uh, presented. Um, you will see that, well, that the guide um, has uh, um, collects, let's say, uh, around 100 micro training pills that have been produced by the Ditrama project partners. And uh, um, they call this guide collect all of them in a PDF uh, form, format. Uh, the content is very similar to the one uh, of the online training course of the mock, let's say, but uh, it, does offer, it doesn't offer uh, interactive uh, functionalities. Okay, but you will have all the material over there. In this moment, is available in English, Spanish, and Italian. And later on, it will be also available uh, in other languages. But let's see which is the content of this guide. So uh, at the beginning, you will see, well, this is the, the, the guide itself, you will see on the screen. Um, these um, 100 fields are grouped in, turn, in 10 le learning units. And, and each learning unit um, f treat, I mean, is focusing on a specific topic. Uh, I mean, these are the uh, topics already presented by Yurum when he presented the, uh, the curriculum of the Ditrama. Um, you here, you can see that there is a complete list, but indeed each learning unit is uh, composed by different uh, micro-training uh, peels, uh, different numbers, and of course, different content. 
Uh, but let, let's uh, see. Uh, well, after this, you will find an introduction uh, where uh, you will find the purposes of the project, uh, the ECVET points uh, of the course, uh, and uh, the EQF level. Uh, as you already know, there is one part, uh, one training part that is for EQF 4, and another one that is for EQF 5. Uh, then, on the right side, uh, you have also the link to register to this uh, uh, course. Um, then you have also the link to get all the information from our website, but also the link to uh, connect uh, with us by the e email. Um, as I said before, this guide is downloadable by the uh, project website. There is a download side, the download section, where you will find all of this. But let's see um, the first, uh, for instance, like uh, the, the first uh, uh, training uh, learning unit. Here, um, in this case, the first one is covering the digital technology, exploration of the contemporary emerging and potential disruptive technology. Over there, you have the list also of all the training fields included. In this case, there are seven of them. And on the left side, you will see all the topics that are treated in this learning unit. But let's try to see also an example of this uh, uh, learning uh, of this uh, learning uh, unit. Um, this is a, a training field that is called Remote Technician and Operator Training by uh, Augmented Reality and Virtual Reality. So here, as you can see, you there is a summary of this the training field, then there are the learning outcomes on the left side of for also for from this training field, and here on the right you will see that there are the uh, resources of this training field. That is a, a, a video in this case and a PDF. Um, then you will find the topics of these training fields. In this case, operator workflow training, service technician training and education, new features and software product showcase. And then customer presentation and factory layout design. Uh, then in each of them, you will find the takeaways related to the furniture industry, meaning those ideas, those key concepts that can be uh, highlighted as a key important point from this uh, learning unit. At the end, you will have also a list of additional materials related to the topic treated in this training unit. Um, some of them can be um, or documents or web pages or videos. Um, they differ, of course, from uh, training pill to training pill. So, but let's see an example in this case. So we go there and then you click and the video will start. So here you have seen that uh, you have the video and the subtitles. Uh, important is that uh, you uh, you have the possibility to uh, see the uh, subtitles in the uh, other six languages of the project. Spanish, French, Italian, uh, Romanian and uh, Polish. Uh, so, uh, here there is another example of the uh, training uh, pill. In this case, uh, um, I would like to highlight the fact also that uh, we have uh, a, a PDF document that is supporting as a resource the content of this uh, training pill. You have just to click here and then the file will be downloaded. Okay, here we have another uh, video. Uh, touching the topic of this. So we will see also in this case the video. Okay. 
Uh, then uh, what we would like to highlight also is that uh, we try to provide uh, um, quite practical information, quite practical examples uh, in relation to the technologies or the strategies uh, related to the uh, different training pins and the different uh, learning units. So in this case, for instance, in this uh, training pin, we have the example of uh, the Omega company, a case study of the TAPIO. That is a software. So in this case, uh, you will see how this software will help uh, the, uh, the furniture companies in uh, implementing their uh, digital transformation. And uh, we can see the video as well. So I just would like also to present another case studies because we consider that the case study can be very interesting for the people from the sector and from our uh, furniture uh, companies. Um, in this case, uh, is uh, an uh, ERP software and uh, uh, it is presented and as well here you can find uh, a PDF uh, document with more detail, more information on how to use uh, and exploit this uh, resource. Uh, so you have seen there are different kind of uh, pills, of training pills, and uh, also the video uh, can uh, differ from uh, one uh, to another. But the point is that each of them will provide you with uh, detailed information for the different uh, topics. Uh, thanks for your attention, and we hope that you are going to enjoy the Ditrama experience. Okay, uh, now... Uh, I would like to uh, give the floor to our keynote uh, speaker uh, that uh, will, uh, will talk about the digital transformation and uh, the related trends and uh, scenarios. Um, uh, the person who is going to present this is Jeroen Fransen. This is a senior expert talent, uh, expert in uh, labor market and organization from the Agoria uh, entity from uh, Belgium. So we can start with uh, his uh, video. Good morning to all of you and thanks for having me as a, uh, let us hope, inspiring uh, speaker for the closing webinar of this really relevant DITRAMA project under the Erasmus Plus umbrella. My name is Jeroen Fransen. I am a Belgian labor market expert and I work for the for the largest sector federation in our country, Agoria. Agoria represents over 2,000 member companies and they have either technological or digital activities. Altogether, these, uh, these companies employ more than 3,000, I'm sorry, more than 300,000 people. I think I've been invited to this webinar because I am between brackets the face of the Be The Change program on which I have been working together with my uh, team for over three years now. The main goal of this project uh, is to draw as clear as possible the impact of digitization on the whole of the Belgian labor market. So we, we did not limit our work to our member members core activities we we analyze the impact of digitization on the belgian economy in total and our analysis are both quantitative explaining where job loss and job creation will take place but also qualitative mainly focusing on the changing needs for skills in a digitizing world the invitation or the agenda you got to read might be 
a little misleading as I'm not at all a specialist in furniture of any kind. So what I'm going to do is not telling you what the emerging technologies in your field of activity will look like. I am going to present you three important macroeconomic evolutions to which the furniture sector as a whole, but the digital transformation manager in particular, will have to respond to. Now also come up with some suggestions. Let's go with the first statement. Labor market all over Europe will be characterized by a shortage over the next 10 years. Three main reasons for that. The foreseen survival of the European economy, the demographic models in most of the European countries, and the leveled playing field Europe is trying to create in term of, uh, or in terms of international competitiveness. In case of Belgium, the situation looks like this. We start at the left with an average number of open vacancies that actually flirts with 140,000. The numbers show that labor demand will increase over the next 10 years by 0.6%. Labor supply, though, will, uh, will be characterized by a slight decrease. Um, it's a small number, 0.11%, uh, but there will be a decrease in the supply of people able to work on Belgian labor market. And the result, if we are not taking the, the appropriate measures, will be that Belgium might face a shortage of 541,000 people open vacancies by 2030. It's the equivalent of more or less uh, 60 billion uh, euros of gross domestic product. Perhaps it's good to explain you that there are six job families who are mainly responsible for the increase in uh, the demand. First of all, those who take care, those who work uh, in education, the trainers, the ones creating, so all sorts of engineers and handicraftsmen, the digital experts, the sales force and the service oriented profiles, and last but not least, the ones installing, maintaining and protecting our technological infrastructure. Second statement. New technologies, new business models, new markets, new services, they are developing at such an enormous pace that it's just no longer possible to plug them all in in the curricula of schools high schools and universities. Even, even while we are trying to come up with some future-proof skills framework, reality in most of the cases overtakes our uh, good intention. So schools and companies, they will need to continuously interact and to co-create the best possible hybrid learning environments, offering real-life projects, using the latest tools to create the newest customized products and designs. And companies, they also need to open doors for learning experts to keep their teams of workers up to date with the fastly evolving skill demand. I added this slide to my slide deck. Um, uh, it will be made uh, available afterwards for you. Uh, and there we mention or we try to, to list the most important skills in a digitizing world, such as determined by uh, 60 uh, European experts. I will not going, uh, going to read them out loud uh, together with you, but what you might immediately state 
or C is is that the vast majority of of the most important skills they are rather soft in nature and of course I want to underline that these skills come with definitions and levels and please keep in mind that the main goal was to present them in an easy and understandable way to the general public. Third and final statement. Productivity growth, the growth of the added value one worker can create is under pressure. It is no longer growing. Productivity though is a major element in the European competitiveness towards global players. Just to assure you, it is very important that I state that productivity for me personally no longer equals people working harder. We will have to organize work in a different way and reach higher efficiency, better results, mainly based on a solid increase of the working comfort for every single one of us. So, the main fields we will have to play on are one, activation to counter shortage, two, upskilling to stay relevant in our jobs or reskilling to move to a job in higher demand, and three, assuring the quality of our work but based on an increased working comfort. How can we do this? How can we make this work? For the activation challenge, I first of all need to explain that in Europe and most certainly in, 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 in my country, in Belgium, we are organizing work in a quite binary way. Either zero, you don't work, or either one, you work full speed ahead. We are not that used to apply working arrangements in between. Yet a lot of inactive people, people with, with limited skills, chronically ill people, men and women taking care of their children or parents, they don't feel at ease in this binary model. Let's think about how we can get them on board, on what projects we can offer them, and let's try to make them part of our prosperity. A lot can be said about upskilling and continuous training. There are a, a, a lot of discussions going on in, in several countries about how many days a worker should be able to be trained every year. Does he or she have the right for two three or even five training days? In my personal opinion, everyone should be preparing his or her role for the future for more or less 10% of the working time. So I am talking about 20 days of training or knowledge sharing in all possible forms. In line with the company's strategy for the future, so clear communication on this strategy is essential. And personally, I'm not talking about a worker's right for 20 days of training. I'm talking about everyone's duty to develop. Everyone, not only the happy few, has to be the change. And then my final thoughts on sustainable productivity growth. How will we organize working and learning in a more efficient way, more result driven and yet more comfortable for the workers? My answer is not teleworking, but investing in the right set of technological tools to make the job for every worker less repetitive, less dangerous, more creative and more human oriented. And please, ladies and gentlemen, just offering tools to support your operations is not 
enough. It's the digital transformations manager's task to assure that everyone feels familiar and comfortable with this human machine corporation. Probably, uh, dear spectators, my intervention didn't have the angle that you expected, but I nevertheless hope you got some inspiration out of it. From the heart, congratulations with the Ditrama project and feel free to connect through LinkedIn or to check www.agoria.be slash be the change. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you soon. Thank you, Rune, Rune for, uh, for this, uh, this uh, interesting, uh, interesting uh, intervention, uh, intervention for this speech. This. Uh, I think that there are uh, quite a lot of inputs that uh, should be, um, we, we should think about them uh, to plan uh, our future activities, but also in relation to uh, the results of our of our project. I think that thanks thanks for for this. Um, just a reminder: um, if you are connected and uh, you have entered. I mean, if you are connected on the YouTube channel and you have registered, you can also insert and comments and question on the chat. So, and if we have time and the possibility, we will try to comment on that and we'll, uh, we'll try to answer. OK, thanks uh, for uh, also for your active uh, or for your active participation. Uh, now I would like to give uh, the floor uh, to Serena Leca, uh, the researcher at the Aros University and a key uh, partner in the in this uh, Ditrama project. Um, the roundtable will be on the impact of the digital transformation on the labor market for the wood and furniture industry. And with her, we will have, as I said before, three people, uh, three professionals in this field. That will be Javier P, Javier P, Margherita Royatti, and Nicolas Van Beek. So thanks to all of you for joining us. And uh, please, Serena, the floor is yours. Thanks again for uh, your contribution. contribution. Thank you, Max, for the Thank nice you, introduction. Good day to everybody connecting from Europe. Good early, early morning for the ones from US and good afternoon, good evening to the um, eastern part of the world. My name is uh, Serena. I'm an Albanian living and working in Denmark for Aarhus University, one of the partners at the Trauma Project. Uh, we have had two very important departments uh, from our university, the formerly known Department of Engineering and Department of Management, contributing into the trauma with the design and the content of the learning pills. So if you see myself or other researchers from OS University in the uh, material over there, please feel free to reach us out if you'd like to continuously learn more um, from that, uh, those pieces of information. Actually, my uh, very favorite highlight from Jeroen's um, uh, keynote was one of the skills that he called active self-development, dedicating 10% of your working time to upgrade your skills, upgrade your knowledge, and upgrade your um, abilities to adapt to the new changes in the labor market and fit like a glove uh, in your future. For that reason, we have uh, three distinguished guests, which I would start presenting right now. Uh, it's nice to meet you guys. I'm really excited uh, for our talk in the next 40 minutes. I'll start with... Um, Xavier, who is the chair of the Diagnostic 4.0 uh, Working Group in the Industry 4.0 Commission, the Engineering Association of Catalonia. Good morning, uh, Xavier. You're connecting um, with us uh, right now. You hold a Master's of Science in Industrial Engineering, super passionate about digital twins and IoT, Internet of Things, which actually 
complement it with your hybrid background in mechanical engineering and software engineering led to your work in cyber physical systems. I love uh, multidisciplinary work. That's what I do in my daily life. So I um, really support uh, that approach of your career. You're also a member of the um, Info PLC++ magazine as an editorial board and has been our um, advisor in the trauma for the last three years. Um, greetings again. I'll Continue with uh, Margarita, who's connecting from Italy, uh, the Coordinator of International Relations and Research Fellow at ADOPT. Uh, Margarita, you hold a PhD in Human Capital uh, Formation and Labor Market Relations, and you have conducted multiple projects nationally and internationally uh, foreseeing research in skills and training. Uh, recently, you've been a principal investigator in research commissioned by European cross-sectoral social partners. Again, on skills, innovation, and training. And uh, Margarita, I, uh, as woman to woman, lady to lady, I congratulate your work on the sustainability area with regards to expertise in green transitions, but also influencing in gender equality with regards to tasks and pace that uh, different genders have uh, in their workplaces. Good morning to you as well, Margarita. And, uh, last and but not last least, but not least uh, my favorite Belgium in the last 24 hours. Nicolas, <laughs> um, good morning to you. You're connecting with us from uh, Belgium. Um, you are a product trainer and head of training program at uh, Van Hocke company, right? Um, a Belgian uh, company, a partner to the furniture industry since 1967. Um, you have previously been a teacher also in the woodwork area. And as far as I can see from your work in your company, together with 280 employees, you are committed to invest in technology and automation to fit very nicely in the coming changes that digital transformation brings to the furniture uh, sector. This is a quick introduction uh, for you guys, and I again encourage the listeners um, from YouTube and um, future listeners from this video to interact with you. If there are any questions and comments, I'll have one of my three eyes in the YouTube chat uh, so that we can direct those questions at the end to our distinguished guests. Let me start with question zero. Uh, which will be directed to all three of you, starting with Xavier, Margarita, and Nicolas. Related to you and your work, what would be three to five keywords that represent digital transformation in general terms? Xavier, you can start. Xavier, you okay, can start. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, if we have to synthesize in, in, in four words, I. Uh, I begin with flexibility. Flexibility is a work that condenses and concentrates a lot of what is happening now with the digital transformation, or what ones uh, with digital transformation do. The second one is um, a new, um, new emerging digital and physical value chains. The third one uh, should be transversality. And the fourth one is model-based thinking uh, for everyone. Now uh, it's my turn. Thank you again for uh, inviting me to participate in this uh, interesting, really interesting uh, final conference. Uh, from my side, uh, the main keywords for the digital transformation are human capital, training in terms of upskilling and reskilling and sustainability. Uh, fostering innovation and improving companies' competitiveness uh, is a traditional objective of the policy agenda at both the European and member state level. Uh, for example, uh, in the framework of the Europe 2020 strategy, uh, the European Union has implemented policies to support and advance companies' use of new technologies. Uh, in recent years, a policy uh, has been increasingly focused on new technologies and digitalization. 
Uh, as with the establish establishment of the uh, digital single market, which aims to provide fast digitalization, internet connection, and boost e-commerce, and establish data protection rules for and foster supercomputing internet connections. Uh, furthermore, digitalization objectives are increasingly uh, combined with other strategic ecosystems. Uh, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, for example, envisages special attention being paid to environmentally friendly policies. An array of policies related to the labor market are also being developed. Uh, policy debate centers around the potential for job creation and job loss as a result of new technologies and digitalization, as well as the effect on job profiles and related skills need, which is the focus of your, um, or your European funded project. Accordingly, the Upskilling Pathways initiatives and the Digital Skills and Job Coalition aim to foster digital skills among citizens, so human capital, training and sustainability. Please, Nicolas. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna take it uh, to three or four words. Um, for me, one of the the most important things uh, I have I'm not the one who built the the systems uh, at, our company. at our company. I'm the one who trained the people and uh, working with people. For me, is one of the uh, most important things is people. Uh, never forget the people uh, behind the system. Uh, data. Uh, I was not a. a, a yeah, a believer uh, in, in the digital, maybe I'm, I'm the best um, person to talk about um, resistance in, in this thing. But now I see what, um, how interesting data can be to uh, look at uh, what is necessary for the people to train. Because when you ask something, they don't say anything. And now you can see what's going wrong. and. Uh, not use it uh, to to uh, um, in a, in a bad way, but just use it in in, in, in a good way, and save time. That's for me, one of the most important. Thank you, uh, Nicolas, Margarita, and Javier. Um, if I have to summarize it, um, the key words that Javier was presenting were very related to the mindset that employees and the companies would have to embark on digital journeys. And then Margarita, you were like an encyclopedia of all the uh, different key uh, legislations and policies that are directly influencing these uh, transformational journeys for company. And you very nicely um, mentioned what are these policies and where some of these companies should look for if they would like to develop their human capital with training and more sustainability oriented practices. And Nicolas, I was reading for your um, uh, keywords that you apply this systems thinking people using the data so they can save time in the operations that they have uh, in the companies. And that's how um, this journey would make it easier for them uh, towards digital transformation. Very good. Um, I'll continue with the first question from question zero to the first question directed to Margarita. Um, related to your work in the uh, latest years, let's say, um, also from the developments in the last decades. Where do you see digital transformation having the most impact in the labor market? Uh, what are the main changes that we have seen with regards to this impact? Thank you, Serena, for uh, uh, this important question, which also brings me uh, to some remarks uh, uh, concerning the keynote speech uh, we uh, have been hearing before. We are well aware that the changes uh, taking place in the world of work as a result of the fourth industrial revolution have been long pointed out by international bodies and research centers. Of course, my is a research perspective in this, uh, in this field. Many scholars, especially in economic field, have stressed the that the mega trends contributing to these developments include globalization, so the value chain, uh, value chains already mentioned, uh, new production processes, and uh, demography and technology. And I will focus on the technological factor. Uh, technological change has been identified as one of the main driver, drivers in many advanced 
uh, economies of structural change in the labor market. Uh, this is notably the case for two main patterns uh, of employment development that have characterized the European labor market uh, in the last decades, as already mentioned by our uh, keynote speaker. So the first one is the upgrading. So uh, a linear improvement in the employment structure with greatest employment growth in high paid jobs and high skilled jobs. And the second one is the polarization. So a relatively stronger employment growth at both ends of the job wage distribution, leading to a shrinking in the middle uh, of jobs. So on the one hand, technological advances generate relatively greater demand for higher skilled workers who are better able to master new technologies, but relatively weaker demand for lower skilled workers, the so-called skill bias technological change hypothesis. On the other hand, uh, some jobs are more suscept uh, susceptible to technological displacement. Uh, if a high share of the tasks performed by workers are easy to automate and hence replaceable by machines, uh, for example, routine, clerical and manufacturing and production jobs. These often dominate the middle of the job weight distribution. Uh, less routine jobs, which include personal services at the bottom of the weight distributions and knowledge intensive and professional services at the top, are less easy to automate and therefore less vulnerable um, to this replacement. This is the so-called routine bias effect. On labor demand. But uh, instead of providing you with a lot of information from the research uh, perspective, I'd like to um, give you some data um, um, gathered through a recent research uh, I carried out in the, cost, in the context of a different European funded project, uh, which highlighted a large gap in the use of digital technology currently present between large enterprises and small and medium-sized enterprises. So the variable I want to talk about is the company dimension. Um, according to the Digital Economy and Society Index published uh, by the European Commission a few weeks ago, um, uh, this gap interests both complex technologies, so the so-called game-changing te technologies, and basic digital solutions. Uh, the furniture industry is a labor-intensive and dynamic sector dominated by small and medium-sized enterprises and micro-firms. Moreover, according to the DESI Index and referring to the human capital dimension I'm, I mentioned before, four out of ten adults and every third person who works in UK, 1.5% of people in Italy have at least basic digital skills. And that 3.6% of employees in Italy are digital experts, but 55% uh, of uh, companies that hired or tried to hire digital experts report difficulties in filling these vacancies. In 2020, 19% of European enterprises employed ICT uh, specialists. And among EU member states, Ireland and Belgium presented the highest proportion uh, of enterprises employing ICT um, specialists. Uh, enterprises are providing more and more training, so the upskilling and reskilling uh, impacted by the digital uh, transition to their personal to develop and upgrade their ICT skill, which is also a proxy used by European Commission when talking about innovation performances of EU member states. And overall, 20% of the EU enterprises provided ICT training for their personnel. Unfortunately, I have to say that Italy is at sixth from the last position with respect to this indicator, with a percentage just over 15% of training. And we're looking at the company size again, 68% of large enterprises actively provided that training, while only 18% of SMEs did so. Thank you, Margarita. This is really insightful. Uh, you just made a case for many companies on what is the market assessment for how 
digital transformation has impacted already the companies that have gone through digital transformation and what is expected for the ones that haven't. And um, I, I appreciate your time in the answering the question to take terminology one by one. Many companies might have experienced certain contexts or situations, complex um, times, especially now after COVID, where value chains have been suffering a lot and they had to adapt to a more um, a digital um, approach. And clearly what these companies have to do is have this inclu inclusivity across all their employees. So there is no one left behind those four in 10 who lack digital skills. We should have them on the boat as well. Um, uh, come us come together with the company and and, and develop further um, the the digital skills so so thank you for that and we also saw um, from your um, assessment or from your um, data that clearly there is a difference between how employees and employers uh, are impacted by digital transformation and that would be my question to you uh, Nicolas can we distinguish between uh, this impact that digital transformation has among the employees and the employers, the ones who are hiring um, in the companies nowadays. And um, how are these two different targets groups experiencing digital transformation and how their decisions influence each other um, with regards to digital transformation? Um, so say yes, yes and no. Uh, maybe it's also a, a personal question. Maybe there is an employer who has no digital digital sk uh, skills at all, so the employee has an, another role in the, in, in the, uh, on on that moment. So it depends from person. One thing is uh, for everybody the same. It's um, when you start with digital transformation is a, a, ch a change management, and everybody's scared from it. Um, also, the, the, the big boss um, is maybe scared. I have to uh, bring a lot of money on the table and what's going to happen with it. Um, but the biggest thing with the employees is um, maybe they think uh, they're going to lose their jobs. Um, and one of the most important things in, in the whole story is communication. Communication and uh, the speech uh, yeah, of the tempo where you bring it on. Yeah, uh, everybody has to be on the same level before you go to the next step. Uh, everybody has to understand why you are doing it before you do it, uh, because uh, it, that that's one of of uh, the things. So, is there a big difference? Yeah, they have another role, uh, but they both care, and and that's one of the, the most important things to be. Uh, aware of um, yeah it's it's also a, a, a thing of believers non-believers age it's uh, uh, one of the most important things in in this uh, topic because you have a lot of employees um, who are uh, yeah grow up with the uh, technologies and the new things and a lot of uh, company yeah management uh, are a little bit older and they're not growing up with it. They have to learn it also. So the uh, it's it's a kind of trust uh, communication thing. So yes, it's different the way they're gonna uh, do it, but they have the same problems. They're scared, and yeah, that's a uh, it's difficult sometimes. Thank you, Nicolas. This was a very honest answer. Um, I'm guessing both employees and, and employers that are listening from the furniture companies, they found themselves in what you mentioned, that digital transformation goes along with change management. And uh, it is frightful for many how this change is going to impact me. How am I going to behave? Am I ready for it? Is it safer to play by the old uh, rules and so on? But, but clearly what I hear from you is that every company should do their own assessment because it's case basis. It depends on the history of the company with regards to digital project uh, products or uh, digital uh, operations internally in the company. And sometimes uh, employees and employers have to take different roles, different hats, and then say, okay, 
I am the employee, um, I am hired by you, but clearly we have to do this grassroots initiative and ask everybody uh, yeah. to see this project or initiative differently. So I'm very happy for your message that everybody has a role. So we should not be expecting from leadership, from management, from uh, our uh, um, subordinates or uh, superiors for the next um, step. It's an interplay. Everybody gets to um, do their own um, bit. And I'll, I'll jump now uh, to Xavier. Um, clearly, digital transformation does not have only risks, right? Uh, um, and and um, situations where we would want to be prepared a hundred thousand times before we, we encounter them. Digital transformation presents many opportunities too. Um, so for the companies that haven't gone through digital adaptation yet, um, what are some of these opportunities that these companies are missing out that they should grasp immediately and where they should start? Okay. Um uh, uh, let me present, uh, you know, in order to decide you know, uh, the, the next step for a company, uh, I think the first step is identify which role uh, the company uh, want to play. You know? and, and let me present uh, um, very, very roughly the model of Jeremy Rifkin. Jeremy Rifkin presents a model based uh, called uh, zero marginal cost society. You know? And the, the the basic idea is uh, that there will be two main roles. No? We can have, uh, we can make a comparison, for instance, with what is happening with YouTube. No? Uh, YouTube is a huge infrastructure. We are now using YouTube no, for doing this event, and there are uh, incredible and huge infrastructure that is behind no, working this infrastructure. And also, there are many users of this infrastructure. No? Now uh, we are users of. of, of of them, of it. And the, the question is that this infrastructure is very, very flexible. You know? So that means that uh, the, the pronostic of, of, of the, the forecasting of uh, Jeremy Rifkin is that mechanism that is happening in the digital world will also happen in the physical world. You know? So the main two roles, the main two roles will be uh, the decision is uh, uh, be part of the set of providers of this uh, flexible infrastructure, so be a service provider, and the other role is be a provider of products or be a product provider. And the decision is not decide which role because the, 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 the final decision will be, be a mix of these roles. No? This is an extension of the dilemma of uh, produce or sell. Um, okay, uh, if we go to one of the, of the edges, for instance, um, an in independent and, and a very small provider, no? and this will be something similar, similar like as a YouTuber. No? And so here, the, the model, the reference, uh, would be Iron Man. No? Iron Man is the, 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 the idea of the cyber-physical YouTuber. Okay, and on the other side, you have YouTube. We will have uh, providers, uh, generic uh, digital service providers, that will let you. When I say you is an, an very an, an, an independent, um, for instance, uh, a person or an an organization, that will be able to <coughs> to uh, to uh, contract to use. Uh, these digital services, no, and these digital services include quoting. Quoting is one of the most um, the, one of the most cost costly activity. And design and organize the production and also the logistics. No, when we think about logistics 4.0, no? logistics is we have the idea, for instance, of for Amazon. No, you have you make a click and then in a few hours, you have the product in, in, in your house. So, where to start? Uh, first, identify the role, and second one, this, the, define the specific next steps. For instance, uh, instant quoting. Instant quoting is uh, we, we, we can make some steps towards instant quoting, 
being a, 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 a big organization and, and also being a small organization. The, another access uh, would be a digital product definition. Uh, if we have all of our catalog of our products defined digitally, production is the materialization of these digital designs, no? of these digital models. No? So many of companies of sectors are done steps in, in, in that direction. No? But it's important to identify in which part we want to play. Um, if we are talking about digital, huge flexible digital infrastructures, and this way is uh, highly capital intensive. And if we take the direction of uh, being uh, a product provider, is this way is uh, talent intensive. So um, there are many, many opportunities and many opportunities in, in, in both sides and also for uh, big companies and also for small companies, even individual, no? Indiv individual uh, approaches. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Xavier. Um, very nicely uh, put together. Clearly, digital transformation presents an opportunity for the companies to reframe new business models, right? And they have to think whether these new ways of conducting work has to be created in-house or they can outsource it. And when they want to do it in-house, they need to be aware of this agile infrastructure that they have to build if they want to go fully with regards to digital products or digital services. And of course, they have to make sure that they have the talent in-house that can go through this transformation. And then on the other hand, if they decide to outsource it, they have to play the numbers. Right? They have to calculate and find out that they don't go above and beyond what the company can handle to avoid um, financial damages in long term, but slowly and um, with a solid ground, take the steps with this other provider of digital services and make sure that the adaptation in the company has the right timing, uh, gets the buy-in from the employees and um, presents their role as a company, even though they are getting some services uh, externally. So um, very nice reference as well to the zero marginal cost society. Uh, hopefully for everybody else, this is uh, an additional resource um, for them to check. When I'm thinking now, actually, from um, when we were creating the content of the online course, you can actually find uh, Peels that direct all these three questions uh, that, that uh, Margarita, Nicolas, and Xavier have already answered. So I highly encourage everybody to take the course um, as well. Now, let's go to another question for all of you. Um, we, we love advice, right? Uh, we, we love advice. Sometimes we follow ourselves that advice. Sometimes we don't. <laughs> but at least we, we can try to give some advice and then leave everybody uh, decide if that piece of advice will uh, work for them or not, depending on their context. But according to you, what would be a piece of advice for uh, everybody who's listening on how to prepare for the ever-changing nature of work in the digital area? What would be this piece of advice? And Nicolas, you can you can start. Maybe one of the advice start today, but not with a whole project, but with little steps. Um, and when you when you decide what you want to do, uh, when we start a, a new project, it's it's always save time. It has to save time for the customer. And it has to save all, or the customer can be an, an employee or a, a customer itself. <coughs> That's one of the things. Uh, so save time is one of the um, Remove friction. Um, when there is a problem, maybe you can, uh, and then afterwards there is low budget. And when you can say, that's your problem, we're going to fix it with the digital uh, system. Yeah, it's, uh, it's so, Look for the right things to start with, but start today. Um, remove all friction, and save time, and uh, never forget to talk with the employees who's doing the job 
at this moment because he knows what, uh, in which way it has to go uh, and listen to the, uh, the, the, the person who's doing the job for them uh, at this moment. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Nicolas. Uh, Xavier? Ah, okay. Uh, maybe in one word, no, mindset. Uh, develop uh, what we could say uh, a digital transformation mindset. No? That means uh, not to invest too much in, 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 in digital in, in digital specific knowledge, because one, what, what, what is happening now is, okay, we have to go digital. Um, uh, who, who are the most experts in digitalization? Uh, software developers. Oh, okay, we have to learn to develop software. No, this is a very bad way, because software developers are specialists. They use many, many, and very, very complex tools. And the message is uh, the new, tools for digital transformation must be a, a easy to use tools. So the message is remove barriers. Digitalization must help us to make things, not to complicate things. So the way the, the, the advice is focus on your core skills, use digitalization to empower your core skills, and there is a minimum digital skills that we need to perform to make the digital transformation so go for it but don't go beyond too much because if you enter in technical digital specific you will lose your focus and you will waste a lot of time this is okay thank you Xavier uh, Margarita it's my turn. And for answering this question, fortunately, likely I went to the resources uh, produced by the project partners, which are really insightful. So I found out that technology uh, using the production and maintenance uh, of uh, wood products is rapidly evolving. So increased specialization uh, in the use of materials, tools, processes, and designs is a consequence both of technological opportunities and the uh, globalized market. Um, so the need to serving uh, a niche and uh, bespoke markets for some good products uh, increases and should increase the focus not only on digital skills, but also on customer service skills and design. Uh, skills. However, and I'd like really to point uh, this out, is that digital transformation should not be considered uh, alone, but should be um, considered as a twin of the green transition. Um, an integrated policy approach that consider other developments such as the transition to a low carbon economy and also demographic changes which uh, could be responsible for uh, maybe um, hampering the, uh, the possibility of workers to uh, keep on track of the technology evolutions in the sector should be uh, considered. So to me it's crucial uh, to consider the close interrelationship between the sector transition towards a more circular economy and its digital transformation. And the path uh, to a circular economy requires the collaboration of different actors, ranging from policymakers, industry, experts, like uh, my colleagues in this uh, panel, academia and consumers, and to activate and speed up uh, the transition toward uh, this green economy, the industry offer uh, of more circular products should expand together uh, with the market and consumers' demand for such products. Uh, in order to achieve this, and this is exactly what your project uh, has been doing for uh, the last years, uh, vocational education and training providers, policymakers should cooperate and um, have partnership with the industry in order to achieve uh, the goals uh, of both the digital transformation and the green transformation. 
Yes, thank you, Margarita. Uh, well, a lot of advice, right? <laughs> we, we have a new Bible now for what the companies uh, can consider with regards to digital transformation. I hear it clearly that uh, Nicolas puts emphasis on, uh, actually, Nicolas, we could have started yesterday with the digital transformation. And today we're taking a second step, uh, but still important to uh, break down the work uh, in small size bites so the, the the company and the employees is not overloaded and they are not feeling uh, like they are stuck with this immediate changes and they don't know how to act there. And I uh, clearly hear again from Xavier that the mindset uh, should be on board. So we can have experts um, in the company that can carry out digital transformation, but the rest of the organization who is not a software engineer or experienced in this digital area should accept it, should acknowledge it and appreciate that work and see, okay, can I do something for this? Can I, uh, can I be an activist of digital transformation? I might not know it very well, but I can be an activist within the uh, company. And I um, read from Margarita's notes that clearly in this uh, journey, your advice is for companies to not go through digital transformation alone. They should come together with policymakers, with providers, suppliers, customers, other stakeholders or interests, uh, groups of interests in the ecosystem that everybody has to play a role here. And there is an opportunity for the furniture sector companies not to start only a digital transformation process, but also a green transition process. And see, while they are implementing some of these new digital practices, can they also save the environment? Can they also um, have an impact into the Mother Earth with regards to the materials that they use and the choice of tools and processes that they make when they uh, treat these materials? Um, I highly appreciate your advice. And uh, my last question, which is a surprise question right now, would be um, clearly we see that, that communication is um, being key in this um, in this arena and how can we communicate better with our employees uh, can we communicate to them that there is uh, an approach that can have innovation um, in whatever digital acts that we do in the company can we communicate that uh, it's going to do well in their um, final budgets or in the uh, financial statements of the year can we communicate that uh, their jobs are going to change what can we communicate right now to our employees um, in the furniture sector with regards to these changes? Um, we can start with Xavier. Okay, Serena. And let me let me extend the 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 the, the, the last question, but I, I'm going I'm going to answer this question. Eh? Um, uh, yes, you, you, you said uh, the rest of the company activist. Yes, but when not activists, but in, in, in the following in the following way, no. Uh, in, if if the organization the digital transformation can be done, and the technology can be can be done using and um, when I say easy easy to use tools, for instance, there are the low code. Low code is an emerging approach that people can, in fact, develop, develop software without writing software. No? So the, uh, low code means that all the principles of the digital transformation can be implemented without painful tools. An example, an, an, an example, and, and, I, and I'm going to answer you the question about communication. No, um, the scenario is if if uh, if people uh, the workers have a digital twins of all the problems or the main problems that concerns them they can try in a simulated environment the solutions they not only try try and learn they can make errors they can correct they can make decisions using this uh, this, this digital twin so the digital twin is the most important artifact and is will be and is and, and is going to be the most important way to communicate because communication is not just a, a, a set of words is using the notion of digital twin or, or the, the, this artifact 
communication is also is, can be also tacit because there is experience. The, the tacit knowledge can be managed in a, in a different way. So for me, it's the most important um, change that uh, organizations. So you have not you 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 have not to be an expert to be sure that you will you will not make a mistake because it, even you are not an expert, you can uh, try uh, uh, and use solutions. You you, you can uh, make errors. Interactive, in, in, a, in an interactive, interactive way, so you can make many, many, many errors correct, and then pass to to to, to the to, to the real world. No? So I think that communication uh, will change uh, in, in this way. Uh, very important. Thank you, Xavier, for for complementing the talk. Um, everything is interconnected here, right? Yeah. We just have to make sure that we find the right. Uh, uh, casualty or where the the arrow flows and remember um, the the roots where this was uh, coming from what was the genesis uh, for whatever decisions that we took Margarita what's your insight on communicating my insight is that um, we are uh, aware that uh, from uh, scientific reports and past researches that uh, the reasons behind the imbalances in terms of adoption of digital technologies between large enterprises and uh, SMEs uh, um, could be identified not only in the elevated cost uh, and also difficulties uh, in adoption of digital technology, but also in terms of uncertainties about data security and um, the low awareness of the benefits of digital technologies uh, or the lack of self-efficacy, um, for example, confidence uh, of the SME owner and staff to use them for uh, increase the productivity. So um, using a better communication also towards employers and entrepreneurs in terms of the opportunities, not only the risks concerning the adoption of digital technologies, technologies and providing them with useful resources also for engaging their staff for um, be training and upskilled for using uh, as well as they can the digital technologies uh, in a relationship with experts uh, could be a good way for increasing the adoption of game-changing technologies and uh, improving the opportunity part of this spectrum. Yes, Margarita, we, we, we can tell our employees to look at the glass half empty, half full, or we can say you can drink the water. Everybody get a straw and let's uh, benefit from it. Nicolas, your uh, remarks on communication, you were very positive on it, so uh, I'm, I'm very um, curious. Yeah, but oh, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult thing, uh, communication. I think it's, it's um, one of the most... Uh, important things to do is to solve a problem with technology. And we, when you solve a problem for somebody, nobody gonna be uh, angry on you. So it's it's yeah. When you start there, then they're gonna see the benefits when you take the project further in uh, in time. So I think it's very important to uh, tell at the one who have to do the job normally what's what's in for it, for him. Uh, one of the biggest problems for the moment is we don't find the people to do the job. So you have to work two, time, uh, two, two times so hard. Uh, you have to make uh, 20 hours in a day uh, to do this job. Maybe we can do it uh, when we do a digital uh, transformation on the job. What, uh, and that's, that's most important. When somebody see the benefits, they're going to accept it. And, that's, that's yeah. the most important. Thank you, Nicolas. I can see that we have a new member of the panel right next to you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, schools are closed uh, for the moment. So. <laughs> perfect. But a uh, very important comment, uh, Nicolas, what you say, that when we approach our employees to communicate a future change with regards to digital action, we have to convince them and show to them how they can be the hero of their own story. So how everybody in the company is solving an issue, a problem, fulfilling a need, or uh, making sure that an opportunity is not being missed. 
um, in this digital transformation process. Well, um, this was all from us. Uh, once again, thank you, Javier, Margarita, Nicolas, uh, for your insight and uh, being vulnerable to take your experiences and share it with everybody who's listening. I hope that... Um, mm -hmm participants can actually reach out to you afterwards uh, if they want some more um, insight and maybe other types of resources. Uh, great job to the trauma team. I'm very proud to have known you for the last three years. Um, everybody who's listening, stay tuned. We will come back at 11.50. So you have uh, five, six minutes to go grab coffee, tea, or just stare out of the window. There are pigeons or snow or flowers, whatever you have out there. Relax your eyes from the screen and come back um, in 11.50. Thank you for your time and see you soon in the The Trauma course online. Hello, welcome back uh, to the conference. Uh, first of all, I want to thank to thank uh, uh, Serena, Xavier, Margarita, and Nicolas for the very interesting uh, roundtable. Um, I think that uh, several uh, good inputs have been provided to us in terms of a general analysis and then also some details from a technological point of view and human resources point of view, and uh, also like the forecasting on how the uh, the sector or the, 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 the digitalization will impact on the sector. Um, maybe just a quick uh, reminder, um, it has been mentioned the importance of uh, twin uh, transition and uh, uh, just uh, uh, a short reminder that few partners and people present here in this uh, conference have already participated in a previous project, a soil project in which did we deliver a detailed analysis of the impact of twin transition on the furniture sector. You can find the link to the report in the chat of uh, YouTube. Uh, so thanks again to, to all of them. And uh, now I'm happy to give uh, the floor to Gregorio Cagnavate, uh, International Research uh, and Development Project Manager at uh, CETEM and coordinator of the AllView project. And uh, he's going to present us uh, the importance of this uh, center of vocational centers for uh, center of vocational excellence for the European food and furniture uh, in uh, sector. So please, uh, Gregorio, the, the floor is yours. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for the presentation. I'm going to talk today how uh, we are building uh, together a platform of centers of vocational excellence uh, in the furniture and wood industry in Europe. So let me talk about this uh, very interesting project. But first of all, let me introduce you the concept of uh, vocational excellence, okay, or the centers of what is a center of vocational excellence, also called COVE, you know, the crony. So COVE uh, needs to respond to the labor market and are aligned with the priorities uh, of the European skill agenda uh, that we are going to have during the following five years. And the Commission proposals uh, for a Council recommendation on vocational education and training that was presented in, in July of on 2020. So what is a COVE? Uh, it's a bed uh, center, it's a university providing vocational training, Ardeya Kobe. Uh, it's a business association that is providing training as well. It's an R&D center that is applying its knowledge to teaching innovation. Or it's an employment service that is development uh, uh, or promoting training. So the answer uh, are they a COVID? What is the answer there? No? It's, it's, it's a concept that is new for us. The answer is yes, they are a COVID, okay, but not alone, not uh, a single organ organization, but in collaboration altogether. So the approach of the COVID is focused on the development of skills ecosystems, okay, skill ecosystem, increasing their quality and adaptability by developing innovative curriculum and teaching methodologies. So we are talking about skills ecosystems. What is 
skill ecosystem. Uh, if you want to talk about the skill ecosystems, uh, you need to understand that the globalization uh, brings in global problems and global solutions to the education. A rapid undertake, uptake of the technologies, okay? Everything is changing very fast. Migration, social problems, uh, labor market in constant change, etc. So you need to think that those global problems are going to apply to your region or your sector. That's the first thing. So here we can say a quote very important that is think global and act uh, local, let's say. No, That would be the, the quote here. For that, um, the solutions uh, developing these platforms of COBEs, such as all view, need to be applied at local, okay? Those will be incorporate those the providers, the industry, the policy makers, and of course the people that are looking for jobs, for training. So those are the skill ecosystems. So let's talk about a little bit, start talking all view. Is all view a COBE? Actually, it's not a COVID is a platform of uh, centers of vocational excellence um, at the international level, at the European level. So you won't pretend to be excellent. This is one of the first things when we are talking about excellence, if you are not uh, international, if you are not working in internationalization, this is the first thing. So what is uh, what we are doing in all view? Um, what, we, what is our consortium? Okay? What are we building here? We are having R&D centers, we are having the education representatives, education providers, we are having as well in our consortium the policy makers. Uh, those policy makers that are going to, let's say, deploy our results at a smart specialization uh, strategy level. We are going to have the industry that is going to validate our results. This is very important. So let me start talking about uh, the all view um, main uh, data. Uh, it's an ambitious project. It's the first uh, Kobe uh, that is going to be dedicated for dual training in the field of wood and, and furniture. Um, it has a budget of 5 million euros. We are uh, around, we are 22 partners plus four associated partners from eight uh, European uh, countries. And the project started in November 2020 uh, with a four years duration. So we are passing the, the, the first years of the, of the project. The project is going to target different technologies like artificial intelligence. Uh, we is going to target a blender learning is going to target circular economy, environmental protection, of course, digital transformation and industry 4.0. We are targeting as well uh, what is called ambient assisting living or active aging in the habitat sector. Technologies for digitalization like 3D printing, virtual reality, and also the smart specialization strategies. So the first results that you can find or you will find in our Kobe all view is the blender learning. Focus on three main topics, the circular economy in the wooden furniture, active aging, and of course, digital transformation. Uh, what are we targeting with this? Uh, what are we developing? We are developing uh, new training uh, materials from research projects. So, uh, channeling the research into training, like in the case of Horizon 2020 projects or existing projects like Form 360 in the case of circular economy. More or less the same for active aging. We have existing projects that we are going to apply in our all view platform are also taking uh, some good examples from innovation like in Pharaoh. And of course, for digital transformation, the drama for us is very important and it's going to be used during the following uh, years in this uh, all view platform no? for training the teachers, for training the students. Also, not only 
developing training, but also developing new methodologies in training, okay, using uh, new technologies, key enabled technologies for teaching as a methodology. 3D printing, okay, that is going to support uh, the student uh, with uh, as a visual support for abstract concepts, okay, is going to to foster the project based approach. You are going to work uh, in projects developing uh, whatever exercise, but in 3D printing. This is going to, to enhance the motivation and the same more or less for augmented reality, virtual reality and mixed reality. Okay, we are studying those technologies at the moment uh, in order to find what are the best ones for um, using in education in our sector. They are going to uh, to allow us uh, for more complex training in complex environments. For example, uh, in virtual reality, before you go to the real environment, it's going to save money to the companies. It's going to allow the digital learning. It's going to allow collaborative environments. So new training methods. Also, what are we doing uh, for uh, ensuring the sustainability of our work network, okay, networking, once again, international internationalization. We're going to do international mobility. We have uh, around 150,000 euros in our project for mobility of teachers and students between countries. Teachers and students that are going to go to very innovative companies, uh, innovative uh, research centers, other universities, and so on to to learn a lot, okay? So, and in the future, we want to incorporate uh, enterprises in the network and also more centers uh, of training. All of this, as well supported by a tool that we are developing, an open source uh, software platform that is going to include uh, training and employment parts involving uh, the people involving uh, the training providers and the companies as well, very important. So if we are going to use artificial intelligence and machine learning in this platform. Do you can imagine, for example, a Netflix uh, that is going to offer you new courses according your uh, uh, the skills that you need, according the demands of the of the of the labor market. It is what we are going to do. For example, this new tool is going to, to offer for the persons, okay, for the people, courses based on the skills of their interest and recommendations based on users with similar profile to, to, to you. It's going to, to offer as well to the enterprises, okay, candidates. Are the candidates with the skill necessary to my enterprise? Are there some candidates there that I can incorporate to my enterprise? Or, for example, uh, can offer to the enterprises courses uh, based on, on the skill needed by the workers or courses that based on needs of enterprises similar to me. Okay, this is another tool that we are developing. I'm finalizing. Another very important thing is uh, that we are now and never has been so important to be environmental friendly. Uh, furniture and wood has a say. Uh, we need to to think that uh, we need to uh, to think that the wood need come, for example, from from certified forest. We need to be to develop sustainable products that can be circular, for example. And we need to be sensitive to people with different uh, capabilities, with people in risk of social inclusion. Uh, this is what all view is about. Uh, to support the companies and the policy makers in the search of the excellence in inclusion as well, in inclusion and environmental protection. Uh, we have devoted work package for that. So this is all from my side. Uh, I'm Gregorio Cañamate Cruzado, Innovation Manager uh, from CETEM and the Kaitan of Allview. This is uh, my the team of Allview, very proud about them and thank you very much. Thank you, Gregorio, for uh, for this very nice uh, presentation. Um, indeed, uh, uh, there are several partners here that are also partner in the Allview uh, project. Yeah, I have and, to say uh, that that the Allview um, 
idea or the old view soul came from from the trauma. Probably it was one of the inspirations. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for this. It was very very nice to to, to mention this. But anyway, th there are several partners that have are contributing quite a lot to to this. Um, new project, and uh, uh, I think that all of us think that uh, it uh, we can uh, expect very good uh, thing in terms of uh, uh, not only to study, but also as a result of this uh, whole project for our companies, for for our furniture companies, uh, not only at uh, local, at national, but also at international level, and also increase collaboration among the entities involved because that is the future for sure. Okay, now is uh, time to uh, give uh, uh, the floor to the uh, second round table that we have. Uh, uh, it will be a face-to-face -face, uh, among uh, um, vet providers, uh, vet provider representative and higher education uh, uh, representative uh, facing the, uh, the digital challenge. Uh, it will be moderated by Chiara Terranio, that is the project manager, in this case of uh, the trauma, uh, but she's also responsible for uh, uh, the international part activities of Federlegno Arredo, uh, that is the Italian, the biggest Italian association in the wood and uh, furniture sector. Uh, then we will have with her Clara uh, Ferraz, uh, Alexandra de Raeva, and uh, Matthias uh, Grimonfon. But I will give the floor to Chiara that will probably present better all of this. Thank you very much, thank you very much, much Mars, Mars, uh, and thank you, Clara, Alexandra, and Matthias uh, for your attendance and for your time. Uh, as uh, we are here uh, together with uh, Clara Ferraz, Head of Training Activity in CFPIM, Training Center for the Wood and Furniture Industry in Lordelo, Portugal, and Alexandra De Raeve, Head of the Research Center FFTI Lab, Ghent, University of Applied Science and Arts in Flanders, Belgium, and Matthias Grimpomol, lector at Ghent, the same entity of Alexandra de Reve, and but here he is here also in uh, as participant of the trauma pilot training course. And Matthias, you are one of the first DITRAMA certified students uh, after the DITRAMA course. And so we are uh, very glad uh, uh, to host you here in this conference. And uh, so uh, we go straight to the point. And uh, we have heard from all the speakers not only the relevance of the digital transformation for the manufacturing and for the furniture sector, but also the necessity to plan this strategy according to the evolution of the market and the customer needs. And as you know, the European Commission, uh, as a, one of the main priority, is to reduce the gap between the education and the labor market needs. And so, Alexander and Clara, you represent here two important education institutions for the furniture sector and how your training paths aim to enhance the digital skills, but also the attitude to the digital transformation of your student. And uh, so it's up to you and uh, Alexandra. Thank you, Chiara. Introduction. <laughs> um, so yes, I'm Alexandra de Rave. Um, personally, I have a background in, uh, in textile engineering, uh, which may sound a bit peculiar, but uh, I, can I can assure, assure you there, there are, are many, many similarities many. between uh, both well, the textile industry and, and the furniture industry. Um, well, before I entered the uh, academic world, I worked for more than 10 years in, in industry as a product manager. Um, so I started my career as a researcher at Hogan in 1999. Um, I've been the head of the department of fashion, textile, and wood technology. And nowadays, I'm, I'm head of the research center, FTI Lab, which is partner in, uh, in the Zitrama project. Um, FTI Lab is a multidisciplinary R&D center um, working in areas uh, like comfort and protection, digitization, uh, and sustainability. Um, our target industries are the 
textile and the furniture manufacturing industries. And uh, well, besides uh, this job, I also hold a uh, position as lecturer at our university. So Hogant, in fact, is a university of applied sciences and arts. And uh, so we offer a big variety in, in all kinds of the Degree programs, and one of these programs is the uh, Bachelor in uh, Wood Technology, and this is a unique course program in uh, in Flanders. So, being a higher education institute, um, I'm convinced that it is our duty to to closely follow up societal trends and. Uh, Yes, maybe we can pass to the other speaker because we don't have uh, the possibility to solve this problem. And uh, Matthias, if you are ready, we can give you the floor. And, uh, and uh, so, so uh, this is a quick question for you because uh, it seems that the main message from uh, uh, the experience from Alexandra, but also from the previous speakers, is the priority to combine some technical background with the tools and, uh, and experiences to enhance the open-mindedness of uh, the students. Matthias, you are both a lecturer at Ogent and one of the participants of the trauma. What has been the added value of the trauma for you? And uh, tell us also the main lesson that you have learned after this program. Hello. Um, so there are many added values of this uh, the trauma project. Um, till the summer, I was also R&D specialist at a furniture company with uh, approximate 100 uh, employees. Uh, the core business was zero production of dining furniture, bedrooms and some office furniture. So development of new products was one of my responsibilities in the company. Um, after that, I'm now uh, um, fully a lecturer at uh, Hogent. And uh, certain things can be applied easily and uh, are sufficient to understandable for companies um, that aren't leaders in digitalization. So uh, the gap. Uh, an example is the implementation of Ardis. So the, the most practical one. These things are invisible in the workflow and the benefits are clear for everybody in the production flow from management to operator. So um, for me, it's very important that uh, some changes or digitalization are clear for everyone in um, the whole culture. Other things are for some companies not immediately usable, so uh, because of problems in the company's culture, or for some uh, employees that are um, technical um, uh, employees. Uh, so the HR um, story is, is, I think that's um, a little bit too far for some um, uh, production managers and etc. Uh, many companies holding the old-fashioned way and don't want to take the risk to implement new stuff like an assessment of the digital maturity, which leads to the discovery of a digital lack. Yes, but this way of work is hard to change. So um, the main lesson I've learned after the trauma is that digitalization is not only changing from paperwork to um, digital files, but also the reorganization of the whole business culture, the digital ecosystem. Of course, I have some experience with ERP, connecting software to machinery, etc. But also the digital connection from customer sales or management to the production floor is important. And that's one of the, the main things that are um, highlighted in the, um, in the course, um, that communication is very important. Um, also, the digital connection from customer sales or management to the production floor in both ways, bottom up and top down. So uh, I think that is the biggest challenge to convince the companies to make their digital transformation. The course is a good add-on for our students with technology to create more depth in their point of view on digitalization. So that's my opinion about the uh, added value of uh, the JAMA course. for uh, your experience. You are a great ambassador of the Trauma Project, and so please uh, share your experience uh, through the social network and through the Hogent uh, students in order to improve also their uh, interest and attitude to the digital transformation for the furniture sector.
And so thank you. And I come back to Clara Ferraz and with the same question uh, that I had to Alexandra. And so uh, tell us uh, how the CFPIM is uh, uh, working for the improvement of the digital skill of uh, your uh, younger students. So oh, I was first, uh, uh, sorry, I was first presenting myself uh, and I, I was saying that in the name of my organization, thank you for uh, this invitation to this face to face. Uh, I was also saying that um, I've been working in CFPIN for the last 20 years and the last six uh, years uh, coordinating all the training activity. I was also saying that our vocational training center is uh, as a national uh, scope. Uh, it is a public no-profit organization that results from a protocol uh, between the Institute of Employment and Vocational Training and also from the Association of Industries of Food and Furniture. Uh, we are also the only training center in Portugal directed to wood and furniture industries. Uh, it is located in the north of Portugal, in Paredes, very near Oporto, where most of the wood and the furniture industry is located here in Portugal. Uh, so, we offer, we provide training courses for young people and for adults, workers and also unemployed people, um, from uh, European Qualification Framework Levels 2 and Level level four uh, and mainly in technological technological areas such as uh, furniture design and furniture technical drawing uh, programming and operating wood machinery uh, production management for furniture industries finishing and materials technology so all our training programs are very uh, focused on the technological issues for wood and furniture industries uh, to have a more clear idea about mm. activity uh, let me share just two indicators with you uh, for this year uh, 2021 we have or are almost finishing uh, 170 courses and 2,400 trainees. So we have uh, activity all over the country and these are two main indicators of our activity. So regarding now your first question, are our training pets aiming um, or to enhance the digital skills? As I said before, all our training pets are uh, uh, have already a, a very important component, digital component. Uh, we use in our workshops CAD CAM, we are using to, the, to do drawing uh, CAD 2D and 3D. Uh, we use softwares of uh, ERP. Uh, so we are, our training programs are already uh, full of digital, uh, digital component. Of course, and uh, using some of the, of the information that our uh, colleague Gregorio uh, referred before, um, it is very important to, to promote the quality of training programs, uh, mainly uh, developing new contents and also new methodologies. Uh, and um, very, very, very important to refer in our national uh, contest, uh, we will have a very important, uh, I, I would say, digital transformation for the next four years, um, because we have a very huge investment plan. It is a public investment to modernize our facilities and equipment. So it uh, becomes from a national uh, plan, a transitional plan for all, all the country and for all the public entities. And of course, we, our vocational training center as a public entity will be uh, covered by this huge investment, public investment. So, and that will be very, very interesting for our, our training, uh, uh, our quality uh, in the offering, the training plans. So uh, also I would like to refer another, another issue. Uh, next year, uh, 2022, we will have a, a general review of our uh, national catalog of qualifications. 
uh, and our vocational training center will be responsible for it for the sector of wood and furniture uh, so there is no doubt about the rule that digital skills uh, are going to play on this general review and uh, not only for our sector wood and furniture but for sure uh, regarding all the sectors uh, the trauma for sure also will bring to this uh, huge task uh, a very 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 important inputs and contributes uh, and so um, regarding the, the second part of your uh, your question Chiara when you ask about the attitude so it's not so not only our training paths but also the attitude that come from our students and towards digital transformation it's it's very curious because we have to start with our students by the very beginning and the very beginning is to explain exactly what digital transformation is and begin with the concept of digital uh, because we have to clarify and explain them that digital is already some, is already something that is in our lives everywhere uh, so we just have to uh, reinforce to uh, to give them new tools uh, to make the maximum profit from this new uh, new uh, uh, new framework or new uh, new theories or what our soci society needs in in fact uh, so i think and the, the first challenge for us and for our students for our trainees in our vocational training center is to give them a very practical perspective um, from the point of view of the digital transformation. Uh, tell them about personal and professional professional uh, uh, ideas. Uh, so, and this is our main challenge regarding our our students. Thank you, thank you, Clara, for your experience. And I try to come back to Alexandra. And my apologies for the technical problems. I hope that now we can continue our conversation. And uh, so, Alexandra, switch on your micro. And uh, uh, so, uh, you are also a good observer of the furniture sector in your country. So, what are the main expectations from the company point of view regarding the digital skills of their uh, your uh, young workers, and also from uh, regarding the students that coming from your institutions? Uh, well, still remain that our students have a solid technical background and uh, and also knowledge and expertise in in major uh, software systems for designing production planning um, and uh, they have the the ability to to quickly adapt to to other systems um, so also as a higher education institute we we strongly promote a culture of, of lifelong learning for all. So, so this is in fact also an attitude that we reflect on our uh, students. Uh, so in our current program, we already offer quite some possibilities to develop their digital skills. Um, we offer CAD programs, ERP um, and, and, and so on. Um, on the other hand, well, the procedure to make changes to degree programs is rather complex uh, but this doesn't with all this at all uh, from designing and and rolling out new courses that uh, that really promote latest di technologies uh, digital tools and this can be for example in in the format of uh, of micro credentials um, which are strongly supported also by the European Union uh, to create this lifelong uh, learning attitude. Um, but however, we, we must also not underestimate that uh, university staff too uh, is, is aging sometimes. Uh, so also for us, there is a, a, a need for a train the trainer scheme with uh, new digitization challenges and therefore um, at the FTI lab uh, at our uh, R&D uh, center we really strongly invest in research projects so we can really anticipate on these skills needs and to really push them into education so like this we 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 
train ourselves by doing uh, research. Um, furthermore, I think we, we can also say that, uh, or at least I feel that this digital transformation uh, really goes hand in hand with a green transition process. Um, so there's definitely also an urgent need for so-called green skills to support uh, sustainable product development uh, and, and sustainable protection processes. And indeed, um, I'm convinced that digital technologies can play an important role in this. Um, and otherwise, well, to, to conclude, um, I also sense from, from industry that there is quite some interest for what we call tailor-made trainings to help them go through these uh, well, transformation processes, both for uh, digitization and turning into more uh, circular uh, industries. Thank you, Alexandra. Thank and you, Alexandra. for concluding for con this uh, second round table, just a few words also from your side, Clara, and from the situation in Portugal. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Chiara. Uh, from the point of view of our organization, um, our organization has a very special relationship with companies because we are really uh, very connected with the, connect all the companies in Portugal. So we work with the companies and for the companies, which means that the training plan of our uh, vocational training center is matching companies' needs. So the expectation of the companies are really high and they really hope to have workers with the, the, the skills they, they need, uh, namely digital skills. Um, uh, and I could just refer uh, some programs to operate machinery or to use some specific uh, kind of software. Um, so, but, and also I would like to add that most, most of our trainees have internships in companies and this allow us to have a very close relationship about companies and to know exactly what they need uh, and answer uh, their needs and expectations. Of course, trainees with digital skills are always very valued and very recognized by the companies, but this is not the only the, the what companies need. They really need another kind of skills and we cannot forget them also. Uh, we also have the opportunity that was also referred by Alexander to answer some, some needs of the companies in a very flexible way. We can just meet their needs and to, to design a very specific course if necessary. So we also have that possibility. Uh, I would like to to underline also that the modernization process that I spoke before of our training center itself, it will be cru crucial to increase and to promote more and better training uh, regarding this, uh, this, uh, this subject of the day, the digital skills. Uh, and uh, this will allow us to, to, to answer to the company, company needs uh, as much as possible and to meet their expectations. If you allow me, Chiara, just a, a last note uh, to refer that uh, regarding the, the, the general review of our national catalogue of quota qualifications next year, uh, the CIFPIM, our organization, will work with a large number of entities and stakeholders, namely companies. Uh, and this will be very, very important, important in this general review of the catalog, because if we are here to answer company needs, we really need to involve them in all this very challenging process, okay? So, and we believe this way we will match as much as possible the needs of the companies, the training offer, uh, the expectations of those who are in the labor market uh, looking for new opportunities of training and of course of employment, okay? So, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Clara, and thank you very much, Alexandra and Matthias, for your contribution. So I think that uh, now we can go to the conclusion of the event with the final statement. And so I give the floor to you, Julio. 
Uh, uh, sorry. Oh, Max, take, sorry. Yes, no problems. <laughs> I will take the floor for this. And, uh, well, thanks uh, to all uh, of you, um, Chiara, Clara, Alexandra, and Matthias, for this uh, interesting uh, uh, roundtable. Um, I think it's uh, pretty clear that uh, uh, here we have... Uh, um, we have highlighted the importance of creating stronger and closer collaboration among the uh, trainer providers, the training providers, both at VET level, at the higher education level, but also um, the, 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 the closer the collaboration with all the entities. I mean, not only between the industry and this, but also all the other actors, as was uh, highlighted uh, before. Uh, in relation to, it, to this, I just want to highlight that uh, during next week, we have already uh, have some uh, meetings, but again, we are going to have uh, a special meeting with the ESCO database for the uh, inclusion of the um, digital transformation manager profile in the new database. Um, we know that it is a reference at a European level, and we hope that uh, um, we can exploit better the results of the Trama project in relation to, to, to this as well. Um, so I'm uh, leaving uh, now the floor to Julio for uh, uh, closing the meeting. Um, I take the opportunity to thank again all the participants um, that assisted to this uh, uh, conference, but I would like also to thank uh, once again all the partners of the Ditrama project that contributed to these uh, very nice and interesting uh, results, but especially the, uh, all the people, the person that participated and contributed to this uh, final event. So thanks uh, to all of you. And please, Julio, the floor is yours. Bye. Thank you, Max. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Well, uh, through today's conference, we have been able to verify that the furniture industrial sector is immersed in its digital transformation. We have learned what trends and future scenarios are to be expected due to the digitalization of the sector and how all is going to impact the labor market. And we have seen how training centers, vet and higher education centers are facing the new training needs of the furniture sector in terms of digitalization. We have also discovered that in this scenario of digital transformation, a new occupational profile has emerged in our sector, the digital transformation manager, and this person will be in charge of leading and deploying the digital transformation strategy within furniture companies. In the Trama project, we have designed, as you know, a curriculum to properly train this profile, and we have developed a complete training course available, as you know, online through an e-learning platform and also available offline through a guide a document. Uh, without any doubts, the training of workers in digitalization in our sector is, you know, is essential, but we cannot forget that the training needs of the sector are multiple, varied, and changing over time. In this sense, there are many entities in the sector that work year after year to identify the new training needs of the furniture workers and to develop training materials that allow workers to acquire them through vocational education and training, formal and non-formal, or through university education and being the Erasmus program of the European Commission, an essential instrument for all this. In, the, in this context, is also uh, for me very important to mention that during the last year, 22 entities have set up AllView and as you know, AllView is the network of centers of vocational excellence in the furniture and wood sector and in the next three years, we plan to carry out multiple activities, as described by our colleague e. Gregorio. We plan to connect the supply and demand of workers 
We plan also to organize and facilitate access to training materials for the sector. And we also plan to facilitate the mobility of students and workers. So I really encourage you to follow and to participate in all BU activities. As we have also already anticipated, digitalization is not only the uh, training challenge facing our sector. In this sense, uh, we must mention that, uh, uh, that one of the six priorities of the European Commission for the period 2019 to 2024 is a European uh, Green Deal. The European Green Deal, in uh, very few words, is a plan to make the economy of the European Europe more sustainable. Under this umbrella, a series of very ambitious action plans, strategies and initiatives are being designed and deployed at the European level, such as the Circular Economy Action Plan, uh, which will, dr will drive the green transition of the European in in industry, including our sector, the furniture sector. Therefore, we can affirm that the European industry is immersed in its twin transition, or in other words, in its digital transformation and in its circular transition. And therefore, its workers have to be properly trained to be able to successfully face this uh, transition. Another clear evidence of the European Commission's commitment to the twin transitions is the recovery plan for Europe, the, or in other words, the next generation EU, whose funds aim to create a greener, more digital, a more resilient uh, Europe. In the sector, we have already analyzed the changes or uh, that the twin transition could imply in our companies and in their jobs. And we have detected what are the training needs of the workers of the future. This, informa this information is essential to prepare our companies and workers in advance for the changes of the twin transition. However, there are more and more voices that in addition to demanding the twin transition of the industry, also demand the need to humanize the industry. It is the concept of Industry 5.0 as a complement to Industry 4.0, and that aims to promote a transition towards a sustainable, human-centered and resilient European industry. The concept of Industry 5.0 is perfectly aligned with the principle of shared value and with the new philosophy of a strategic corporate social responsibility. Industry 5.0 attempts to capture the value of new technologies, providing prosperity beyond jobs and growth while respecting planetary boundaries and placing the well-being of the industry work at, at the center of the production process. In this area of deployment share value in the formula sector, there are already some relevant, uh, uh, relevant initiatives in this regard, such as the Form C as Air uh, project. Just to summarize and conclude, uh, and conclude today, we have addressed the need and the opportunity that the triple transition, digital, green and human-centric represents for the furniture, for the furniture uh, sector. And in this sense, we are fully convinced that an adequate and an early transition will help to face one of the most important challenges in our sector, the lack of vocations. Therefore, from here, we encourage all stakeholders and companies in the sector to work on making this triple transition as efficient and effective as possible. Finally, I want to thank all you who had attended this conference and also I want to express my great gratitude to the 12 entities participated in the DITRAMA project, which we have worked together for the last three years 
and very, very, very especially to the human group of professional colleagues and also friends of those 12 entities that have made the drama be a useful at the reference project for the furniture sector. So thank you so much and see you very soon. You goodbye very soon. Goodbye.